What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Got some Luna Light action for you guys to check out. Obviously, Luna Lights just got a whole slew of new supports coming out in the Legendary Duelist Sisters of the Rose, and it is quite impressive. I kind of feel like my archetype is ready to maybe take that next step forward, and I think it's going to be on the regional top eight level. I definitely think that Luna Lights can do that consistently now because the deck just got significantly better. Shout out to Belza. That's my boy playing in these duels. He's actually been experimenting around with the danger archetype in Luna Lights and he was playing dangers and kind of messing around with them before the new support but after the new support it's so much better so much more consistent because a lot of the new Luna Light cards as you guys know want to be sent to the graveyard and dangers allow you not just to draw de deeper into your deck but they obviously allow you to send cards like Yellow Martin into the graveyard you can send the new Serenade Dance Trap activate that from the graveyard and these guys secondary effects will actually activate at the same time time if they're being sent to the graveyard by danger so it just kind of makes sense and if you guys want to see more of a pure version of um luna lights i will have a link to yugi tube he's a yugi tuber as well and i was watching his build and it was absolutely incredible so whether you're a purist in luna lights or whether you kind of experiment and want to play some hybrid decks everything is looking really nice when it comes to their archetype so let's roll this in the first duels against fluffles kind of a janky build and he does have to go first which double l's don't really want to do but you saw him activate uh uh, the uh, the Tata no how do you say this thing Tata Noko whatever this thing's name is the Snack as people are calling it he did send Yellow Martin to the graveyard Yellow Martin triggered and that got him a copy of Luna Light Fusion so he already has gone kind of like a plus pot of desire is going to give him another plus he is going to use his normal summon on uh kaleido chick and then he's actually going to go for four tricks this was weird i was like what are you doing here and he does that so he can search zephros the elite keep in mind zephros the elite is another card that you can discard for perfume you can discard it for serenade dance or your dangers and then you can bounce like your tinky you can bounce your tiger he is just going to bounce the tiger and now he's going to go for curious this is interesting he sends a perfume to the graveyard and then he uses one perfume to actually send Serenade Dance to the grave. And I was not used to seeing Double L's do this much in a turn one. Going to summon the Kalida Chick straight from the deck. Zeph Zephyros the Elite's going to bounce the Tiki. Now, he does end here, and I thought this was kind of weird. I believe at this point he did not actually have number 41 in his extra deck. That's trolling Delza. <laughs> I think he just forgot number 41. But in this case, you would generally make, like, number 41 and just kind of pass turn, knowing that you have Curious on field and you still have a defensive card. And he still has, like, four cards in hand, so... I I think it's pretty good but the thing about double l's is if you allow them to have like four cards in hand and you don't really establish like you don't get some like a ton of stun on the field you are going to probably get otk'd in your turn even though he has a, almost his entire board blown up it just doesn't matter he has the desires and you would think ah oh, cap second desires in a duel that's obviously not good but now that double l's can pitch so many cards not that big of a deal he's going to activate tiger's monster reborn effect and this is important right so i don't know if you guys saw that even though kaleido chick is negated when she is summoned from things like the uh if she's coming from oh uh, man what's the what's the new one the uh, emerald bird or if she's summoned from tiger since sending to the graveyard is a cost it means you can still activate that when her effect is negated also if your opponent uses like uh, impermanence they chain that or if they happen to use like solemn strike she still gets to send to the graveyard so now he's gonna make leo dancer and i believe he's probably gonna make double leo dancer here yeah he's using wolf the miracle fusion effect of uh of that and basically he can see he's able to make double leo dancer and since he actually did banish the kaleido check from the graveyard to summon the second leo dancer it means that she locks out all battle phase tricks that your opponent can do your opponent cannot activate any cards or any type of effects during that battle phase so it makes it a hell of a lot easier to otk and this is why i love leo dancer man she's coming out she's 3600 attack because of the tinky and she can attack twice so good luck surviving you know that type of damage when each one of her can do 7200 damage and there's two of her on field so second duel I think we might have Noble Knights in this second duel, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, we do have Noble Knights, and Noble Knights are exactly the type of deck that gets punished by Luna Lights, because Noble Knights don't really have that much interaction uh, during their opponent's turn. I mean, they have Morgan, the hand trap that they just got, and that's kind of cool, but she is a hard once per turn, so if you're just solely relying on that, it doesn't really matter how many equips that you get on the board. Your opponent with Luna Lights is going to be able to mount you, and the fact that uh, the fact that Leo Dancer can attack twice, like, she's going to be able to wreck your entire board. So, you can see that he opens uh Sosa opens pretty good in this situation his opponent's gonna make a targets and uh you know he's kind of just mounting up he's got five in his back row as you might expect i think he activates uh until noble knights are needed once again he, he got two of them okay interesting interesting and this guy right here 
this noble knight when a noble arms card is destroyed this can actually pop a card on your opponent's side of the field so if he does use morgan and then he pops one of his noble arms cards not only will the card come back but then he'll actually be able to blow up a card on uh, bells's field so that's actually i guess that is a little bit of interruption tiger is going to be played and he does activate nessie now the thing is as i said earlier since yellow martin was sent to the graveyard by nessie's effect yellow martin will trigger this gives him the ability to just get like lunar light fusion straight from his deck and i believe he's yeah he's going to get a draw as well this is why you plus so much in double l's right now now he is going to negate the yellow martin's effect but it's fine because it just would have been a plus one anyway so you're not now you're just not going plus but it's perfectly fine he did draw a luna light perfume and I think he has one set. Now, here's the interesting thing. His opponent did pop his Tiger, his uh, Pendulum Scale, with the uh, with this Noble Knight right here. But the thing about it is Tiger actually floats if she's destroyed by... Uh, she can be destroyed by Battle or Card Effect as a Monster or as a Pendulum Scale. So even though she was blown up, she's still going to activate her Monster Reborn Effect. And that's why the Yellow Martin came on the field, even without the Pendulum Effect. Now, he's going to go for Underclock Taker, activates the uh, first copy of Perfume. And I think he has Kaleido Chick as well. Well, gets two more cards second perfume is going to come down does not use the effect of blue cat even though it was special summon there really wouldn't be a point here you want to use that on uh, one of your lunar light fusion monsters so you don't use it right now you want to use it on like leo dancer or something like that Snake's going to be summoned, and usually when people activate the effect of, uh, usually when people activate the effect of Wolf, they're almost certainly going to summon Leo Dancer. So at this point, I'm pretty sure that he is going to be OTK'd, and, uh, since he did use Kaleido Check, or since he did banish it when he did summon the Leo Dancer off of the Wolf, none of those effects can activate. You know how the, uh, the Noble Knights, like when you kill Torgius, it, it basically summons, like, another Noble Knight, can't activate because Kaleido Check is basically locking them out. So that's an easy way to kind of OTK Noble Knight players, and keep it in mind that well this is actually just dumb <laughs> he has two two monsters that are 3500 plus that can attack twice like this is dumb i just realized i was gonna say keep in mind that leo dancer can attack twice but i also forgot like boros war dragon can attack twice too like this is actually disgusting when you when you look at how much damage he's going to do and then this one is just bells of flexing <laughs> i love that title <laughs> i believe that that's him at the top he's playing against another luna light build kids if you're going to build luna lights do not play this card don't play reincarnation dance it's so bad especially considering that serenade dance the new trap is just infinitely better and you don't have to set it on the field so his opponent is doing some okay things but he doesn't really establish anything i think that if you're playing luna lights and you go first your main play should be going for number 41 because number 41 kind of stabilizes the board most times you're not going to be able to get killed through it and it's not that difficult of a card to make for luna lights especially now that we have yellow martin but you can see that it that Selza has a ton of cards in his hand gonna normal summon the Kaleido chick get wolf into the graveyard now he has a fusion substitute okay that's pretty cool another card that can activate from the graveyard and you can kind of get it back now this was pretty cheeky i believe that this guy came out in flames of destruction right firefighting <laughs> firefighting daruma <laughs> this is a card that can pop a speller trap on both players sides of the field if you pop your own tiger your tiger will activate and it's also good for popping your tanky because once you got your tanky search you don't really need it that much unless the hundred you know is actually worth it but he is going to use the tanky in that case use his fusion substitute to get another draw so this is just attacking his back row he knows that he can get through the monster at at any point there's leo dancer number one this could be okay i thought he was gonna go double leo dancer but instead what he did was just pendulum summon out the uh the copy of blue camp doubling the attack of leo dancer and this is when leo dancer basically goes super saiyan um no no no, no i was gonna say super saiyan god this is when she goes ultra instinct <laughs> when you get her at seven thousand attack and she can attack twice like your opponent ain't surviving that shit everything after this is just kind of flexing going for the curious dropping the uh, oh no 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 i think he's trying to drop double leo dancer I, he, okay i thought i thought he was trying to drop double leo dancer i was like why is he going for the curious <laughs> this is so unnecessary what exactly is he going for here and i'm like he must be trying to go for a second copy of leo dancer if he wants to open up um if he wants to open up like this extra monster zone but obviously he's able to kill him and really when you get uh leo dancer at 7,000 attack you can kill just about any deck in Yu-Gi-Oh. i really like what konami has done with the uh the double Low archetype. Let me show you guys what the deck looks like on paper. Again, if you guys are looking for um, kind of like a more traditional build of Luna Lights, then I would uh, probably check out the video that I have linked. Oh, you know what? Oh my God, I'm trolling. I don't have everything. <laughs> 
<laughs> I usually have the decks organized like 99% of the time I have the decks organized before I show you guys the deck I apologize about that this is like the one time where it's not organized and I don't think that I'm gonna stop the video just to organize it and do everything but you can see the danger the danger lineup is moderately small this is what seven danger cards and then everything else is uh Luna Lights and Zephyros the Elite no hand traps here which I'm thinking, see, from what I've seen with Luna Lights, I think it's more or less just you want your, like, let your opponent do what they will um, during their first turn. As long as they don't, like, FTK you with, like, Danger Dark World FTK, obviously. Most of the time, you can play through one negation. Now, you know, Gumblar taking out, like, half your hand, that does kind of suck. But in general, you, Luna Lights can play through one or two negations, especially if you have cards like Pot of Avarice, or excuse me, Pot of Desires, that can get you plus. Or if you use these Danger cards, and, you know, these are able to send, like, yellow martin to the grave or they're able to send like zephyros the elite to the grave and then you tanky and like put it back in your hand or even better if you have like a combination of tiger if you happen to send yellow martin to the grave and then you have tiger because then yellow martin will trigger you'll be able to get like luna light fusion from your deck you can then uh, use tiger to reborn something then use uh, yellow martin to bounce it and then use tiger's effect over and over again now this is what i from what i've seen almost all the double L versions right now are maxing out on Forest Burial Goods. The reason is because not only can you send Serenade Dance, and Serenade Dance not only guarantees that you see Kaleido Chick. Kaleido Chick is the best normal summon that Luna Lights have and probably will ever have, so it guarantees that you get Kaleido Chick on board, but as we saw in other duels, well, as we saw in the last duel, getting out your, your copy of, uh, of of Leo Dancer and then being able to summon, like, you know, a Blue Cat. Like, if you draw a Blue Cat, you can Pendulum summon her, but or you can summon her back from the graveyard with like a perfume that'll also trigger her effect but if you don't have her and she's in your deck you can summon your like one copy of blue cat from your deck and then boom your leo dancer will be like you know seven thousand attack and it's just ridiculous at that point now one card that i personally think that double L players should be playing in their extra deck is actually Underclock Taker. I feel like this card is super underrated. If you guys remember what this card was doing and Thomas Rose's, uh, his, his Sekka's Light Burning of this deck, a lot of times he would use this in combination with like BLS, right? He would summon BLS to its link point and he would make his opponent's monster lose 3,000 attack and then he'd run the monster over and then attack again and usually the OTK and Luna Lights, it's the same exact concept. If you use Underclock Taker and well, if you summon Underclock Taker and then you summon Panther Dancer, which I think Panther Panther Dancer is actually better in Le than Leo Dancer in that case. What will happen is your opponent's monster will lose 2,800 attack. You activate Panther Dancer's effect, and then you can attack that monster twice. <laughs> you can attack that monster twice, and your Panther Dancer can attack every monster they control, and she progressively gets stronger, too. So she's actually pretty ridiculous, especially if she's attacking into a monster that doesn't have very high stats. And if you're taking that monster down to zero, it's kind of like attacking them directly, and she'll be able to OTK. But overall, I feel like Konami has done an excellent job with uh, Luna Lights. I guess Selza, the only card that he's not running is actually the new Fusion. I don't think you have to run the new Fusion. I would personally run like one copy of it, but I don't think it's necessary. And uh, I, I think that Luna Lights are now on the regional kind of top eight level. I'm trying to think of a deck that they're maybe similar to. I guess maybe some people would say like Mech Knight Invoked is like a deck that you could probably top eight a regional with, but maybe not a YCS. I, I, I think the deck is going to be very good. And I'm very excited about the new support. So, Whatever you guys think, leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. As always, subscribe if you have not already, and turn on that notification bell for daily videos.